just to believe you and your team and believe in the process. When you touched a three man team, you told the whole nation, I should give you three days to get us a coach. Why did it take so long for us to speculate and speculate for it to get to this time? Giving to the 11th uh, for the Ministry of Fitness was to give us a press release that they are not happy. Why that's happening? With your decision, this decision is it not a slab of the face of coaches on the local scene? And for Kuchilo, your team that you used to play the one goal project for us, we have a different crop of players now. Are we still believing in you to do the same one goal project for us? So we know that we need is the result. Is it the same players you want to use or this crop of players you can use? Thank you very much. Uh, um, what's the name? Is it Emmanuel? My name is Theophilos. 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 Um, Theophilos, um, Coach Milovan was last year in 2010, 13, what, 11 years ago. I, I doubt, I doubt if any of the players he used at the World Cup are still playing. So clearly, he will not use the same players. Is that not the case? That is the case. Okay. Um, what is the other question? There has not been any delay. Uh, I don't know whether you were here at the start of this engagement, but the general secretary went through the process, went through the dates. Perhaps you missed it, but there's not been any delay at all, not at all. For a recap, just listen to him again. So we had a relative council meeting. The committee was asked to bring a name of air coach and as some coaches within three days. They presented that report within the three days. And if you look at the GFA website, we published it. And we said that these are the next steps. And then we mentioned the next steps. That having found the coach, there will be internal alignment with relevant stakeholders. Very important. Then we said after that, the Executive Council will make a decision. It is after that decision that the General Secretary can then sign a contract as stipulated in our status. The General Secretary cannot just sign the contract without the approval of the Executive. As it is the, the provision and the power to appoint the Executive to the Executive Council. So the three man committee will call the Executive Council, internal alignment to be made, the decision will be taken, signing of the contract, and then on the So that is the process we publish. Now, the journalists are to speak. The ministry sought to answer the speculation that nowhere has 45,000 in nation. And they have within their right to answer that and clear that message. And we have gone through the figures, nowhere have I mentioned 45,000. So the ministry was within their right to clear that. Clearing that does not mean that the steps have not been followed or that there is some pitfall anyway. So we've gone through the process, and like we always do, like in, as the president said, we would sign the contract and then a copy, as usual, will be submitted to the ministry. Having engaged all relevant stakeholders already before the decision. Thank you very much. Okay. My name is Wallace from NCL. Maybe the last one. Oh, yeah. On the on the decision and then the effect on the local coaches, whether it is a slap to the fish or why is it a slap? Why is it a slap? No, I don't. I don't. Ghana is one of the topmost football nations in Africa. And Ghana deserves only the best top trainers, wherever they may come from, wherever we would find 
But in any case, there's a man here called Maxwell Kunedu. Is he not a coach of the Black Stars? There's another man called Otuado. Is he not a coach of the Black Stars? So what is the slap on the face of the local coach? This is Richard Ole Dickinson. Is he not a, an assistant coach of the Black Stars? Please, let's stop this they and us business. The Black Stars is the topmost brand of our football association. The Black Stars deserve the very best across board. No sentiments. I'm just here going through the salaries of coaches who coach our direct competitors, Nigeria, South Africa, Morocco. And I'm sure that if you start going through the figures, you say, ah, we're here in Jumio, but these are our peers. These are our colleagues. These are the people we go head to head. Okay? So my opening remarks in this engagement was to show clearly our intent to invest or to continue our investment in our coaches. I think this has been established. Again, through our direct policies, we've given a lot more opportunities to our coaches via national team engagement. You can see clearly that for every national team, we have two assistant coaches, not one that, that it used to be. There's more opportunities for our coaches. Currently, we have a fully functional technical directorate. It's for our coaches. This is not a picture of an FA who doesn't believe in our local coaches. Otoado is a Ghanaian. Maxwell Konedu is a Ghanaian. Siki Akono is a Ghanaian. Kwesi Apia is a Ghanaian. And you are a Ghanaian. I hope you will be a good coach in the future. Thank you. Milo Ghanaian. Milo Ghanaian. And Milo says he's a Ghanaian. Because at least when Ghana was pitched against South against Serbia, who won? Milo won. Ghana won. Yeah, that's why. Thank you. This is an interesting question because this is what journalists call one goal project. I never instructed my players to go on the field and to score one goal and stop it. You understand? So, this is very, I, I mentioned once that I prefer five victories, every victory 1 0, it's 15 points. You know, then to win one match 5 0. Of course, I would like my boys to score as many goals as possible. This is normal. So, uh, that's why this is going to be the goal in every next match. So we will not obstruct ourselves in terms of, okay, let's score one goal and defend. Oh, we yeah. didn't do that. Oh, so this so was just the oh, yeah. circumstances. If you look at the, when you play the matches at the highest level, you have to be cautious and smart. So oh, in the end, it's important for you to win, to get points or to go to the next stage of the competition. So this is always our primary target. So I hope our boys will score as many goals to make everybody happy. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have. I will take the last two questions. What else? Yeah, my name is Juanas from MTL. As part of uh, the process of not doubting the process, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, uh, thank you for uh, the assistant coach and the interpreter. And again, uh, when we left us in 2010, when we were still on our knees begging him to come back, uh, what is the surety that it's not going to do so? And did he ever uh, talk of a day like this again with Ghana? And does he think that he needs to render an apology to Ghana after leaving us in 2010? His contract finished, anyway. In 2010, his contract finished. 
Pa dobro, posle srstvo prvenstva, ja sam radio mesec dana bez ugovora, jednostavno desiti takve situacije da sam morao da odem i jednostavno tako je bilo. Nadam se da će sad biti drugačije. Uh, I already explained uh, recently about this. Uh, I worked one month without a contract. We showed my good intention. So my contract was already expired. So I don't know why should I apologize about this. You know, it's very simple. This is business and this is football. So my intention was to stay. Some things happen and our ways Posle sredstvog prvenstva, mnogo vas je pitalo da li Samoa Džan treba da se izvine što nije dao gol iz penala. You remember, after the World Cup, many people asked, should a Samoa Džan apologize for not scoring that goal? So, for us, you know, this question is, you know, something that shouldn't be asked or something like that. It's just shouldn't be polite at all. My name is, my name is Robert Wachia. Welcome to the Family TV. My question is to the coach. Coach Milo, what will guarantee a player that Ghana Premier League has placed in the Black Stars and probably in the Stars of Life? What will guarantee Okay. The question is, who will guarantee a player in the Ghana Premier League that plays in the Black Stars? Pa znate, prošli put je bilo mnogo igrača koji su pozivani iz domaće, čak smo i vodili lokalnu reprezentaciju i dosta igrača se je napravili. Samo njihovi nastupi i samo da nas ubjede da je to to, sećate se Mafije, kako sam ga iz prvenstva na prvoj utaknici stavio u prvih 11, kad niko nije verovao, on je bio najbolji na terenu. Only their performance. Their performance will recommend them to be selected in the team. If you remember, Daniel Yebo played for Liberty Professionals at that time. And, and uh, he played the first match against Lesotho in the first level. So the performance is what will recommend them to be selected in the team. So every Ghanaian is able to play for the national team. And that's how they should think about that. Uh, I and my assistants will make sure that we see, watch, you know, have reports uh, and cover this so we can pick the we best and give the them the chance. The Players team. talk on the pitch. Mr. President, last question, please. My question is for the President. Mr. President, I want to know why you appointed a coach without the involvement of a technical director.
fact, is one of the positions demanded by FIFA. The FIFA Director, General Secretary, and there are a few positions that FIFA demands. The role of the FIFA Director is development. The head coach's role for the national team is results. So I've heard people talk about the technical director in a different way, as if he plays a very uh, major role in the national senior national team. The technical director's role is development up to the youth level. In meetings that the GFA requires technical input, the technical director gives the input. We've not said anywhere that the technical director did not give an input or gave an input. So to premise the question on the fact that why didn't you involve, that is to assume that the technical director's view was not taken at all or was taken. So I will share the role of the technical director to the media. Because we know by seeing some of the media from FIFA. The technical director would have a relationship with the senior uh, team's coach. And they, would, they would have good communication. It doesn't mean that supervising me in the way we have visited like class side. So please, uh, the technical director's role is different from class side. Thank you. Hello, my name is Yaw Philippines. I'd like to ask coach this question. Um, last question. Um, <laughs> I want to ask Coach Milo, what new outcome would you be giving to the Blasters on the last one we saw on the 20th of 2008? What new outlook would you give to the Blasters? And then has your philosophy of football changed since 2008? As you know, football is evolving, and of course, when you talk about philosophy, the philosophy is to try to win, you know, and try to use the qualities of the player you have, use them in the best way to make a quality group of the players, the players who are able to compete, able to fight against every team, and able to bring victory, victories and happiness to all people. Okay, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think it's been one hour of um, updates and engagement and questions and answers. So obviously that there will be another press conference before our game against Zimbabwe in Cape Coast. That game is on Saturday, October 9th in Cape Coast at 4 p.m. And there will be another press conference before we play that game. So on behalf of the leadership of the Ghana Football Association, we thank you so much for your presence and your company. Um, the new coach of the Black Stars has begun his work, and uh, we can only um, uh, uh, wish wait, 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 the president wait, wait, wait. wants to yes, say yes, something wait, wait, before wait, wait, we go. Um, before we leave here, I want to thank the three-man search committee, led by the vice president, Dr. Abe, and um, Alaji Zida, for the good job could he, could he um, I think that they, they had very, very limited time to headhunt um, for the right man, but they worked 26 hours a day to ensure that we have the best man here with us. Vice President, thank you so much. Dr. Abe, thank you so much. Um, Aladi Zida, thank you so much, wherever you may be. Um, and to Chairman Georgia Marco and the team, thank you so much for all the hard work so far. There's a lot more to be done. And to my colleagues in, in the media, 
let's support our own. Our own is our Black Stars. The Black Stars is our own. We are not perfect. You may not necessarily agree with some of our decisions, but believe in the leadership of your football. Believe in the leadership of your football. Because all of us have the same end vision. The vision is to make the brand good. The vision is to be competitive. And the vision is to be present on all big football platforms. That is the vision you have, and that's the vision we have. We may differ in how we navigate the plane to the right destination, to our destination, to our common destination. We may differ, but the end vision remains the same. Let's support our own. Our own is our domestic leagues, our competitions, our own is our national teams. And in this instant case, our own is our black stars. Let's support the team. Let's give the team the right atmosphere to be able to perform. Upcoming next will be two important games for us. Two very, very important games. We need the positive energy around the team. There's a new Tenkara team in place. Let's give them the opportunity to excel. Let's give the Tenkara team the opportunity to excel. Let's offer them that opportunity and let's see whether they excel or not. Let's support them. Let's support the players. Because we cannot bring Diego Simone from Azerbaijan to come and play for Ghana. We can only have our Ghanaians to play for our dear national team. Even if they are not of the highest quality, which I doubt, they are the ones we have. And with the right environment, with the right direction from this new team, they can take us to the promised land. Please. Let's support, let's change the storylines. Enough of the breaking news and the negative story. Breaking news, positive story. Yes, that is the only way we can encourage the team. That's the only way we can bring corporate Ghana close to our spot. That's the only way your lives could also be affected or impacted positively by football. On that note, I want to thank you so much again. The team here, the general secretary, coach, thank you, and thank you. this bad boy. <laughs> Bad boy. Oh, Henry, he's a bad boy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, coach Max Okunedu, Coach um, Otto Ado, Coach Richard Kingston, my colleagues on the executive committee, um, the board chairman of Asasia Bay and TJI, Sami Enimado. Oh, Sami, they want to see you. Uh, the board chairman, the board chairman of Asasia Bay, uh -huh. Uncle Zico, George Amako. Former Vice President uh, Fred Papo, I think our director, at least today, I'm sure your role in football in this country is very clear to everybody. Because people think that you do the selection for the Black Stars. And, and, and you must do the selection. And you must ensure that we win the games. Okay? But we are grateful for this platform, uh, a platform to exchange knowledge. Thank you so much. We'll meet in Cape Coast. Our Black Stars will fight. That's a promise. You will see a team that truly represents Ghana. I believe in that. I will not leave Cape Coast Stadium having won and having not been satisfied. It will not happen. A general to me, Ampa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. We are done with the press conference.
Well, Milovan Rayevac returns uh, to the Black Stars after 11 years and quite a comprehensive unveiling there. About one hour, 30 minutes. We'll be taking you through, all, um, through the recap of all the information laid across uh, from the Ghana Football Association President Keto Kweku and also taking a look at the highlights from the new Black Stars boss. Uh, but before we do that, let's get back to Muftal Nabila uh, to bring us uh, up to speed on uh, who's around and probably get some information from some dignitaries at the event. Have in Africa. Max. Max. We also had somebody with an African experience, somebody with, with proven background of constructing teams, putting teams together, and somebody who has uh, the ability to bring in young talent and then he must be a, have a disciplinary background, strong disciplinary background, and a tactician as well as strong leadership. So when you narrow it down, of course you have to have a, a high, uh, like a pro, UFF pro or equivalent. So when you narrow it down in Africa for the past 10 years, you're going to realize that about maybe three or four, especially with the Ghana experience. And you can tell for yourself, coaches who have been in Ghana, who have worn the calf, and you know, so you want somebody who hits the ground running. And we, we narrowed to two. We talked to one. He wasn't available. And the second one was Milo, who was more than happy to come back. And he was looking to to the opportunity. So it kind of worked out well. So, so what kind of responsibility have been handed to Milovan? Responsibility? He's the head, head trainer of the national team. And that's the same responsibility he had while he was here. He has to win. And he has to um, qualify us for the World Cup as well as uh, win the AFCON. You know, so those are the same clear. It's very clear to our national team coaches. The same, the same responsibilities we give them. And that is the chairman of the three-man committee, Mark Addo, who doubles as the vice president of the Ghana Football Association. They hunt hunted and concluded that Milovan Rajvat was needed to return to the country as head coach of the senior national team. On September 8, 2010, Milovan's tenure as head coach of the senior national team came to an end after leading the Black Stars to the quarterfinal of the FIFA World Cup. However, He's back again after 10 years. And the Ghana Football Association have given him a simple task. And that task is to end Ghana's near 40 years of failure to win the African Cup of Nations. And what it also means is that should he win that competition, he will be walking home with 300,000 Ghana City, eh, dollars for that financial package, as reported by Joy Sports earlier. Should he also qualify the country to the FIFA World Cup 2022, he will be given the same amount by the Ghana Football Association. His contract as reported by Joyce Post earlier is one and a half years. The first year is for him to ensure that we qualify for the World Cup. Should he qualify Ghana to the World Cup, automatically his contract is going to be extended to February 28, 2023. From the Ghana Football Association for uh, Joy News and on Joy Prime, I am Muftar Nabila Ablai. How Well, so that was Muftal Nabila Abdullah of the Joy Sports team uh, bringing us updates uh, of what happened there. Before that, he actually spoke uh, to Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, Mark Addo. And Muftal did his best impression to try and get a recap of the bigger stories from the one hour, 30 minutes on VLAN of the new or not so new uh, Black Stars coach, Milovan Rarivaj. But Gary... Uh, would we'll be quickly taking us to a recap of some of you know the big news that uh, uh, to come out we came across at the GFA Secretariat. Well, um, so Milovan Rahevat's biggest or the best known secret in Ghana football for the last six days or so, and he's been unveiled. The event began with Henry Asante Chum, the spokesperson of the GFA, telling us the reason why we were gathered there. He went rather straight to the point that we are going to unveil the. Um, new coach of the Black Stars. He then invited the uh, president of the... No, he then invited Prosper Harrisonado, the general secretary of the Ghana Football Association, who laid out the contractual terms. And it's important, you have to understand why they 
lined up the way they did. So the communication person, the general secretary, who is in charge of most of these things, uh, laid out the fact that, yes, in, yes indeed, $30,000 was how much um, he was going to be paid yeah, a month. A month yeah. Also, about, we, we understand, uh, we'll come back, but we understand that Fred Papo is currently speaking to Muftar. Let's go there and get that right now. With a, he, he, he lets his words, uh, his words speak for him. He's a very focused and determined person who doesn't tolerate any laxity in this team. And tell us briefly, um, the president was talking about discipline in the dressing room and all that. You were close to that dressing room. I'm not talking about history. I'm talking about the future. Okay. Do they so, know that okay. So, so future-wise, yeah. what does Milo represent? I believe uh, he represents a lot of hope. He's a very hardworking and committed person, very de determined and disciplined in every aspect of the world. And I'm sure he's one who would make sure he puts his all and his players put in their all for the success of their team. Last time starts giving to him. Is he a and also qualifying for the FIFA World Cup? Is that a reality? Uh, it's a reality, but at the end of the day, I don't believe in uh, targets. Everything depends on God. We only have to put in effort. And that is Fred Papo. He was the management committee chairman of the senior national team when Ghana reached the quarter-final of the FIFA World Cup in 2010 and also the final of the 2010 African Cup of Nations. I've been joined by Maxwell Asabri. Uh, he has followed the Black Stars for a very long time and he'll also be sharing with us what he makes of the return of Milovan Rajvat. Uh, Max, welcome to Joy News and Joy Prime. You just heard the Ghana Football Association unveil Milovan Rajvat for a second tenure. What do you make of their decision to bring back Milo? Well, um... Thank you very much in the first place. What I would say is that I think G the, the GFA is not having the time and luxury to wait for any, any, any new coach. The fact of the matter is that we are, we are in, a, in, in a competitive um, um, journey. Yeah. And in view of that, they considered a coach who has seen the terrain before, a coach who has been here before, knows the culture, and knows the chemistry of Ghanaians, the way they react to issues, whether good or bad. So if you are in search for a coach at this particular critical moment, what informs the decision is the fact that let's go in for a coach who has been in the terrain before. And that is what largely, I believe, informed the decision to hire Coach Milo. Is that the right decision? Well, whether it is the right or wrong decision will depend on the output of the coach and the outcome of all the matches that he's going to play. I believe in judging by your work. We cannot speculate. Uh, we, are not in, in, we are not into the future. Yeah. We don't know what the future holds for us. For all you know, uh, there's a cliche in the, in the media that second comings of the majority of the coaches are not pleasant. Yeah. But I believe that, as he has promised, that it, he's, he's going to change the narrative. Let us uh, hold him to the, to, to, the, to, to the fort and say that perhaps we are going to have a reverse. Of, of the narrative by him succeeding a second time. So let us hold our guns and uh, wait till the outcome of all that he, he comes to do. If we judge him and the, the fact of the matter is that uh, the narrative is the same, yeah. then, we have to, uh, then we can conclude that um, um, his, fire, his hiring wasn't good enough yeah. for Ghana. Okay. But okay. I believe that uh, with the chemistry that has been displayed here, I believe that maybe he, he has the middle touch now to bring something good to Ghana. That is Maxwell Asabret, one man who has followed the senior national team, have a perfect idea of what the senior national team is all about. He just mentioned one interesting thing about second coming. Second comings might not be good, but the second coming of CK Jemfi won the country the last Afghan title we won in 1982. Now I've been joined by Apirigu Chakapama, um, an ardent follower of the senior national team, someone who is close to the players and have an idea about what um, a man like Milovan Rajvat will bring to the table. First of all, tell us your feelings, having heard the Ghana FA president talk about the return of Milovan. Well, um, I'm very happy. I was, um, I was looking for Coach Akwisiapia, but um, unfortunately I didn't get But I You wanted a third coming for Kwisiapia? Yes, I had wanted Coach Kwisiapia. But having get Milo, yeah. I think 
it's also good. I'm I'm okay. And looking at what Milo came to Ghana, what he did, he, he took us to the best in terms of football. Yeah. So now when he's back and I think um, it is very good, we need to support him because he alone can do the work. Yes. So by supporting him, I think things will be very fine. And that is uh, Apiriku Chakapama over there sharing with us what he makes of the return of Milovan Rajvaj as head coach of the senior national team. But now we are going to be having a conversation with a couple of other people who are all here to uh, oversee or watch the return of Milovan Rajvaj as head coach of the senior national team. Every single detail you need to know about his second coming have been reported by my joy online and we've published everything on the website. So go on the website and read all the details that you need to know about the second coming of Milovan Rajvat. Let me speak to Jude. Jude, Jude. Jude will just share something simple with us. Jude is one of the commentators of the FIFA World Cup. Uh, and that's it, FIFA World Cup. Jude is one of the commentators of the Ghana Premier League. He has also been following the senior national team and he'll be speaking to us about the return of Milovan. Jude, welcome to join us and Joy Prime. A quick opinion on the return of Milovan Rajvat. Well, he looks well refreshed. Um, I feel we, we need to give him the support. Um, he needs the backing where we are now. We are in a fix, in, a, in, in, in an area where we can't joke with anything that we do. So we must support him and we must give him the needed, um, the needed logistics to work. And I feel if we want somebody to turn the fortunes of the Black Stars around, he is the right person to do it. He knows the terrain, he knows the culture. And I'm sure you, if you look at his demeanor and his presence here, he feels good at home. He feels like he has the Midas touch. Yeah. Many people had bundled names all over. They were talking about Heavy Renai, they were talking about Otto Ado and Co. Do you think bringing back Milovan, based on the arguments many people have said um, about his record after leaving the senior national team, was it the best thing to happen to us? And what do you foresee in the future? Well, well I, I, honestly, I feel whatever he went to do after 11 years with the Black Stars, I, I can confidently say it wasn't that good. But hey, because he knows how to turn things around with the Ghana team, he, 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 he seems to have the magic in terms of creating a team and a force around the Black Stars. It might not be the best because if you're talking about the elite coaches, he doesn't belong to one. In terms of coaches with high salaries, he's not in that mix. But tactically, I feel he has enough to stabilize the Black Stars and make them a force. So I, I, I am looking at he, he doing probably what he did 11 years ago and beyond, if he has the luck. That is Jude Chiampo over there, one of the commentators of the Ghana Premier League. You hear his voice often. Now, we are speaking to Sadiq Adams, the sports Obama. You heard the president of the Ghana Football Association. Tell him and lie that we should trust the process. Sadiq, should we start, start trusting the process? I think the process has started already. <laughs> uh, it started from, I have had my doubts and uh, I still stay by the doubts I have. Uh, I would want to be proved wrong with the appointment. But I believe that um, they've explained things quite well and clearly. The president um, tried to be a bit inspirational in trying to, I mean, shape the opinion of people and that's right as a president of the association. But uh, we all have to, I mean, hope. We cannot predict the future. It may exceed expectations. It may be even lower. Like they said, Milo has an unfinished business with Ghana. Uh, that was a very interesting line. It can be that Milo wants to achieve something greater than he did or finish us completely. So <laughs> we just have to wait and see uh, if there are more positive outcomes from the look of things. Um, we just want to see the direction and see where he wants to take the team. If you were to make a choice for the Ghana Black Stars in terms of the names that were bundled around and considering our circumstances at the moment, is Milo the best fit? Well, I do not uh, really like second coming of coaches, especially those who have achieved some relative success uh, in the terrain before. But Milo has said that he's coming here to change that narrative. And I believe that with the hope and um, vigor that he has in trying to change, that would depend on what he wants to do. Personally, I would have gone for somebody else. 
uh, like the president said, we all have our opinions, but at the end of the day, the decision rests solely with the committee and the president and the Ghana Football Association and even the ministry. Uh, we do not have, I mean, the chance of appointing. I have my opinion, but once the coach is appointed, your opinion doesn't matter. What matters is the support and how to put them on their toes to uh, churn out the results to the best of interest of the entire country. The final question before I let you go, he's been taxed to win the African Cup of Nations and so also qualifies for the FIFA World Cup. Considering the time that we are in, is it possible, is it realistic targets handed to him? Not, not uh, really. Uh, you would need a very long term plan to me. Yeah. But in football, things happen with far you know, a lot of things will happen yeah. in football that, that doesn't make sense uh, in court. So you have to wait. I believe that even if you give somebody one month to achieve something, it will depend on what the person decides to do and what the outcome of the results are. Maybe, maybe Milovan Rajavak may achieve or attain some miracle. Uh, Milovan may be able to get some miracle for the Black Stars, win, even uh, I mean qualify for the World Cup and win the Afcon, which which will be the biggest I mean achievement for any coach in the last 40 or 50 years. Yeah. But what I think um, the FA needs to do is to plan for the long term. This will be in the short term. Yeah. I've been in this room for the past I mean 10 years, yeah. witnessing the unveiling of coaches, and this has been the regular line when the Afcon <laughs> I mean qualify for the World Cup more than 10 yeah. years yeah. in this same room. So many coaches, <laughs> same line. It doesn't happen. Yeah. But I believe that one one day, one time things will change. So let's hope what happens uh, at the end of his tenure. One day, one time, things would change. That is Sadiq Adams, the head of sports for Angel uh, Broadcasting Group, sharing with us his thoughts on the return of Milovan Rajvaj. Um, one game that many people will never forget about Milo was that quarter-final game against Uruguay when Ghana lost via penalty shootout after Asam Wajan missed the last minute penalty kick in that game. Uh, total matches played by Milo were 28. He won 12, drew 11, and lost just five of those matches. Is his return going to be that magic wand for Ghana to finally end his near 40 years of failure to win the African Cup of Nations and also qualify for the World Cup after failing to do that in 2018? We take a look at the highlights of what transpired between Ghana and Serbia in that game. Welcome to Swanee Pretoria, the Loftus Versfeld Stadium for the opening game in Group D. Serbia and Ghana coming face to face today. Stankovic this time appears to have the determined look of a man who wants to strike for goal. It's going to be Kolarov though on the left foot. Just putting it wide. It wasn't a long way away from Alexander Kolarov. Pantel's going to hurl a long one in here. Inside that box and a good header down as well from Samoa Jian. A terrific throw and a good leap by Shan. Well, it hit the post, didn't it? It hit the post. As it's hit long, it's going to be a booking here. Lukovic has shown the yellow card. It's a second yellow card for Alexander Lukovic. He can barely believe it, but he's forced to make the long walk. There was an arm in there, maybe a little bit of a hole. But Ghana lifted by the fact they now have a man advantage. Lazovic. Chased out by Panzer. But Lazovic has won, won out here. He's done ever so well. Lays it back. Oh, and it's missed in the first attempt. Hit at the second by Krasic. It's a terrific save by Kingston. Denying the 10 men of Serbia. Search of the head from Stravko Kuzmanovic. Oh, and the referee has said it's a penalty. He said it was a handball and he's given a penalty. It did touch his hand. It's absolutely spot on. Asmoa Gian 
has the chance for the penalty spot to sink Serbia. Jen steps up, Stojkovic goes the wrong way, and Garner are going the right way. The deadlock finally broken with six minutes to play, and Garner has the lead. Opportunity for Jan again here to finish it. Oh, he's hit the post. That would have been that. But Asamoah Jan couldn't quite curl it into the far post. Lazovic hooks it back. Stern defending required. Pancel gets the head down. Scramble to some kind of freedom. And that is that. And Milan Ryavak against his home nation will not celebrate the victory. But those in his team will gonna won Serbia nil. Where were you? <laughs> I know I didn't have this hair. I didn't have a beard. Yeah. I was somewhere on the floor. I was a very young boy, yeah. just cheering Ghana. I didn't really know a lot about football that yeah. time, unfortunately. But I really remember the World Cup experience. Yeah, yeah. What about you? What were you? 2010. 2010, I'd uh, just started out not long before. I was two years into my career, having left journalism school like two years before. And um, it was my second major tournament. Um, I was reporting for ESPN on this World Cup. Mm. Yeah, and um, it was... Milovan's appointment is personal for me because it's the last time I gave my heart to the Black Stars. <laughs> and it's the last time I gave any Black Stars coach my emotions. Yeah, yeah so as for Milovan, he and me, we have, we have unfinished <laughs> business. You know? Like he said. Like he said, we have unfinished business. But yeah, um, those were great moments and... It's interesting to see him back and to hear what um, our colleagues had to say at the Ghana Football Association as well. Mm. So, what have we got there? Uh, well, so, a lot has been said, actually, in terms of, you know, the Black Stars and uh, Coach Milova and Ryvac coming back. Uh, we, keep, we keep updating uh, the websites, but you would have the latest, the biggest uh, out of what he said, uh, Milova and Ryvac, is that he thinks the Black Stars could have won the Africa Cup, um, the World Cup, sorry, in 2010 if it wasn't for Luis Suarez and uh, he thinks that if we reach the semi-finals his team did have a good chance and then there's a story about Maxwell Kunedu and Otto Ado also being confirmed as Black Stars assistant uh, head coaches and we do know we do know that Otto Ado and Maxwell Kunedu will still be in charge of their respective club side so Otto Ado will still be the head coach and the assistant coach of Borussia Dortmund and then also for Maxwell Kunedu, he will be the head coach of Legon City. But what we couldn't show you before it all started, because the GFA were very, very prompt. They gave us two o'clock. They actually started talking at 1.56. One, one um, was what happened before the... And this is what started really... It really created a buzz on social media. When the official photos of Milovan for the first time in Ghana started coming out. And yeah, this is him by our intrepid photographer David Andor, Maxwell Konedu, Milovan, Nenad Glisic, his interpreter there as well. Uh, these were the official photos, you know, which showed that all the rumors were really, really fact. So you can get all these on myjoyonline.com in addition to the fact that this is one of the main takeaways. Under Siki Akona, where we had, we had so many rumors that the Black Stars was under the influence of other people when it came to player selection. However, this story is one of the biggest trending on Nigeria Online right now. And it's that Milo says, when it comes to selection of players, it is he. Eriko, why is this important? I think it's extremely important uh, because if you do look at the dynamics set, you know, in the precedent uh, with, uh, you know, CK Akono, you have to be extremely sure and transparent that whoever is coming out there would have a definite pool of players. We saw CK Akono make a promise of a 40 pool and uh, Joyce Spores did his research and realized that in 18 months he had used 75 players. And, you know, interestingly, 
That's more than Milo used in his time at Ghana. So wow. in just 10 matches, CK Akono used 75 players and Milo was in charge of 28 games and he used just 73. And so you could do the math and see that if we allowed CK Akono to probably continue, he could have surpassed the 100 player mark by the end of the year. So this is a coach who has a call and know what he expects. All right, so that's what is on myjoyonline.com. If you just joined us, this is the live coverage of the second coming of Milovan Rahevat. The Serbian, 67 years old now, is back to coach the Black Stars. Let's take you through the main highlights of the one hour, 30 minute event that took place at the Ghana FA Secretariat. So after the photos where he was brought in, uh, we saw Henry Asantichum, the GFA communications director, introduce the event. He then handed over to Prosper Harrisonado, the GFA general secretary, who let us know the following, that Milovan Rahevat has been in town um, since Sunday. He's been in town since Sunday. He has actually started working already. We know from our colleague Muftar Nabila that his contract officially started on the 20th of September. The GFA president let us know that Milovan has been given access to our last 10 matches, all the videos and all the analysis as he gets ready for us to play Zimbabwe in two weeks. We were also told that Milovan, as has been reported and was broken by my colleague Muftar Nabila in the last week or so, he will be on $30,000 a month. The GFA also confirmed officially that Milovan will get $300,000 if he wins the Africa Cup of Nations. If he wins the Africa Cup of Nations, that will be his bonus. If he qualifies us to the World Cup, Milovan Rahivac will be given $300,000 as well, instantly. That will be his motivation. Milovan is on a one-year deal. So from now until the World Cup, one and a half year deal, actually, from now until the World Cup, it is automatically renewed if he qualifies us for the World Cup. That is the deal that he is on. It was also confirmed that Milovan will be given a befitting accommodation. We were not told whether the state accommodation that was initially given to Black Stars coaches, that is um, uh, Kwesia Pia and then uh, Siki Akono for a while, will be given to him. But the GFA president confirmed that he will not be staying in a hotel. He'll be given an official accommodation. Also, he brought his interpreter along. If you look at the pictures that we had on My Joy Online, the man in the glasses who was interpreting, Nenad Glisic, will be part of Milovan Rahivac's entourage. However, the GFA president says that the salary will come from Milovan's salary. Okay, so Ghana will not pay extra to Nenad Glisic. Milovan's $30,000 a month salary, they'll find an arrangement between themselves and they are going to pay um, the Serbian. He also mentioned that a pool of coaches, um, a pool of coaches was had in the period when the three-man committee was taxed to get a coach for the national team and they settled on Milovan Rahevac. As you heard, Muftar Nabila speaking to um, the GFA vice president, we were told that they looked for somebody who was a disciplinarian, who looked for the Ghanaian culture, somebody who had gone in the last 10 years to the highest echelons of the Africa Cup of Nations and the World Cup. And also they looked at, of course, the salary matters that it could fit into the Ghanaian context and what we could pay and what we could comfortably afford. After they looked all the, at all the factors, they settled on a return for Milovan Rahevat. And um, what you see on your screen right now is a rewind of some of the great moments that Milovan Rahevat took the Black Stars through in his first stint. This is against the Socceroos of Australia. In goal is Richard Kinson, who was also introduced by the GFA as part of the technical team of Milovan Rahevat. So Milovan Rahevat will be coach, Maxwell Konedu will be assistant, Otto Addo will also be assistant. It was not made clear whether Otto Addo is going to leave his job as assistant coach at Borussia Dortmund, but we were just told that Otto Addo will also is officially a coach, an assistant coach of the Black Stars. Richard Kinson is also part of the technical team. We are told he will be the official goalkeeper's trainer um, as well. Eriku, did I miss anybody in the technical team? No, so no. Bernard Lippert, yes. Yeah, yeah Bernard Lippert keeps his job as technical director of the national teams. 
And so that's about the summary of what happened at the press conference. And then we took questions um, from our colleagues in the media. Muftar Nabila and uh, Mubarak of our team asked questions. And we will see some of the quotes. If our producers are ready, we'll be seeing some of the quotes. There were also, yes. So when it was time for question and answer, he was asked why he left us in the ditch 10 years ago or 11 years ago. Melovan says, I had wanted to stay in Ghana after the 2010 World Cup, but some personal things happened, so I had to leave. But we should let go of the past and look forward to the future. <laughs> um, but if we can come back to the studio, let me remind you what happened at the time. Immediately we qualified for the World Cup quarterfinal and um, Ghana was, you know, exited the competition. Milo had a period where his contract, and he said at the press conference, remember, yeah. he said at the press conference when a journalist tried to emotionally blackmail him that his contract had ended at the time. So he had a seven day period within which to, you know, give us an answer about what we're going to stay. Now the Kwesi Nyantechi led administration at the time immediately put a new offer on the table for him. Milovan did not want it um, for seven days. We did not hear from him. And um, I remember in an interview with Joy Sports at the time, uh, my colleague Enes Kranting was here at the time. Uh, an official of the GFA said they had no idea where Milo was. Kwesi Nyantechi was very angry when he spoke in that interview and said they don't know where Milo is as well. Later, we were told that Milovan wanted $100,000 a month at the time. And uh, because we couldn't meet it, he had left Ghana. And from a personal point of view, that was the last time I gave my heart to a Black Stars coach. Yeah, so that's one thing he said at the question and answer. If we have another quote, let's see what he said as well. Very cool. And this one says that the 2010 World Cup was the biggest success of my career. And if Suarez did not do what he did, we could have been world champions. Oh. Well, it's interesting because we're going to face what, Netherlands in the semi-finals. Yeah. Did, did we have what it takes at that point to be Netherlands? Look, I believe that at that point... Several of the players have spoken, but none more so than Asamajan. Asamajan said in 2010 at that time, they had the golden touch. That is, those were his words. He said, you know those things that in a team, even when you make a mistake, it's, it's a good mistake. Yeah. He said Black Stars were in that zone if they had gotten to. And most of the players of, the, of, of that squad kept saying it, you know, Riku, that if we had met Netherlands in that game, if we had needed to go under the sea, into the sky, anywhere. And Andrea, you would have been back from Ex suspension. Yeah. Exactly. Andrea, you would have been back from suspension as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any more quotes uh, from the question and answer, if you just joined us? He was asked how he feels to be back. And uh, he mentioned that Ghana is his second home. Says, I am happy, very happy to be here. I hope that we can do big things. I am looking forward to a good re working relationship with the GFA. What else do we have? This one from Milo says that we, are, we all have to come together, the technical team, the media, the players, everybody, to be able to get to the World Cup again. A reminder, Ghana currently sits second in Group G behind South Africa uh, with three points. South Africa have four points. So he was asked what how he is feeling, and this is what he says. Man say he not ready. <laughs> Man says he is ready, and he's ready to give it his best. The thing that I remember so well about Milo's first thing that people liked about him was his calm. Yeah. Barely under pressure. And people remember this. When he beat Serbia, you remember that game? Yeah. On TV, after the game, one member of the team, I don't remember who, wanted to hug him. He pushed him away. Get away from me. <laughs> he had just beaten his national team, his own national team. And that was one of the few times we saw that Milo was angry. And uh, from those who said the other time that people saw him very angry was the Sule Muntari incident, when Sule disrespected some people in the camp. And he told Chris Yantechi that he never want to, wanted to see Sule Muntari again. And the, you know, the hierarchy of the GFA and others said, we understand that he's disrespected members of the team, but let's manage him. And, you know, as it happens, Sule happened to be a key member of the team as well. Ah, there he is. 
<laughs> I, th I think this was arguably his best goal for the Black Stars. Yeah. It was really from nowhere. Yeah. Out of the blue. Yeah. You know, and uh, in the edition of Rewind coming up, uh, Painter, uh, he said that when they were young, they knew of Muntari's qualities, even from the 2000s, early 2000s, that whenever he hits it, it just finds a way to go in. And I think we're really gifted uh, to have a player like Muntari. And he reminds me a lot of Fatawi Sahaku, uh, a young player, something, that's, you know, something that Milovan loves to do, working with young players. So hopefully we're able to see the Serbian coach give a chance to Fatal. Unfortunately, CK Akono didn't have the opportunity to do that. All right, more quotes, Oriku. What are we next in terms of the quotes? So I think we've taken this one uh, where he says that he's ready and happy and uh, he will be given his best for the Black Stars. And this one is uh, from president of the Ghana Football Association. Uh, there was a bit of confusion uh, where, you know, a question was asked about the relationship between the sports ministry and then the minister, and uh, that's because the sports ministry yesterday evening issued a rejoinder stating that uh, media reports suggesting that Milovan Raiva should be paid $45,000 a month should be ignored and uh, processes between, you know, the ministry and the FA are still ongoing and nothing has been agreed. And uh, coincidentally, just about 12 hours after that, uh, Milo has been reviewed and unveiled as the new Black Stars coach. And this is what Ket Okroku said. So that was just a bit of background. And Ket said that there is no ambiguity over Milovan's salary. We have a good relationship with the sports ministry and the minister. We will introduce Milovan to the minister after this unveiling. So that should be happening about uh, any moment from now. Yeah. And then the final quote in our recap, um, reminder that you can get most of the, all the other stories on myjoyonline.com. Kurt says, I believe that our black stars will have a stable character going forward. Now, Eriko, this is important because for those who know the GFA president, he doesn't just talk. He made about three statements like this that we can, we can pick from. Remind us of the other ones. Yeah, I think the one that you can make particular inference to was he said that under Milo, we saw players like Muntari, Asamoajan, Michael Asian, Stephen Apia, all these big names. Yet, Milo was able to keep the dressing room in check. He doesn't remember any issues from the dressing room. Now, immediately you say something as such. And immediately you say this, that right now we are going to have a stable yeah. Black Stars. You, you, it's, it's, it's kind of making... A relation to something because there was a coach who just preceded Milo a couple of months ago or just a month or just even just weeks. a week ago or yeah <laughs> weeks ago and so if you say that uh, he had issues uh, he had no issues with the dressing room and you do expect you know harmony are you trying to suggest that there were some issues in the dressing room that maybe we didn't know and interestingly he also pointed out that now players would respect the coach that's another thing he said that's a very, very that's a very, very <laughs> interesting. You know, we do not want to put words into the mouth of Kato Craig. We are just here to do the analysis. Yeah. And uh, uh, maybe, yeah, we just hope that the players respect uh, Milo more. As to whether they did not respect Sikakono, we cannot, that's out there. We cannot confirm that for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Oroku says we don't want to do analysis. We don't want to do analysis of the press conference because it's out there for all to be seen. However, what we can do and what we are good at doing is comparing... A yeah. and B, the past and the present. They say the past is not the present. <laughs> and so that's what we will begin by doing here for the next 30 minutes or so. First of all, what do we begin with? We should go back to Mil Milo's first thing, right? Um, if we could look at the timeline, uh, you know, of, of how he's come. The whole, it's been a very busy week, especially yeah. if you've been following uh, this whole you know, appointment uh, from last week, CK Kono being sacked and names popping up left, right, center. And, you know, Miller being linked to the job and all that. You know, the three-member committee, people are saying 72 hours is up, it's not up. So if we could just get... All right, so let's get a yeah. timeline. Very cool. Begin. So September 13th, uh, that was a dark day uh, for CK Akono. After his 18-month stay as the Black Stars coach, he was announced uh, that he would no longer lead the team. And his record there was 10 matches, 4 wins four draws, and then two defeats. And then September 13th, we did see the three-member committee set up to appoint a coach. Uh, the next day, Milovan, Raivach, Heavy, Renard, George Boatin, others were linked 
to the job. Okay, then, so things were moving really fast, starting from uh, September 13, when Siki Akona was sacked. And uh, the following day, Joy Sports reported first that Milovan was leading the charge. It came as a bolt from the blue. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> except maybe the three-member committee. <laughs> and then on the same day, we saw that his assistant, his interpreter, had put a picture of them in 2010 as his WhatsApp status. <laughs> that is when things started coming home. Anyway, two days later, the three-member committee submitted Rajivat's name for approval from the GFA, Exco, and government. By this time, we all knew that this is who they wanted. And then four days later, Rajivat's appointment as Ghana coach was approved by the government, by the GFA, and by the sports ministry as well. Well, on September 20th, we did see a lot happen. And uh, actually, it was... Ryovac, uh, you know, touching down at Alisa Hotel. That was somewhere around Sunday, Monday. Yeah. And uh, there was actually an official start date to his contract then because Keto Kreku confirmed uh, that the Serbian had already started work. He's been given videos of the 10 games of CK Akono, and that should be September 24th. That's today. Uh, Milovan Ryovac is now Black Stars coach. Okay, so that's last one is September 24. Uh, sorry about that typo. Rajbat, of course, was unveiled just about an hour ago. So that's the timeline. That's the timeline. And a reminder that Milovan is trending everywhere. If you want proof, Rax, please show us on Twitter. Um, Ghana is talking only about this. And um, if you don't believe me, well, have a look. Well, so yeah, as you can see, that's the top five trends here. On Twitter. On Twitter currently, Milovan Ryvac. And then we have Black Stars, Maxo Kunedu, who has been appointed as the assistant coach. Otoado, his fellow assistant, Keto Kreku, number five. Uh, but let's focus on this man, number three, Maxo Kunedu. Gary. He's not trending for the right reasons. Everyone there is for the right reasons. <laughs> but there's been some controversy around his appointment. And that's because people think the last time Maxwell Kunedu did anything relevant in his career was 10 years ago when he won the league with Kotoko. It's been a difficult time for him, you know, coming in as caretaker of the Black Stars coach as assistant. He went to Kotoko where he was sacked after just two months in charge, struggled, just won one game or so. And then... Recently with Legon Cities, he joined and then he was knocked out of the MTN FA Cup with them and almost went on relegation with a side that had spent over 100,000 Ghana CD. So, Gary, what's your take on uh, Maxwell being appointed as assistant coach? Well, that's, that's a very dicey appointment because um, it's been difficult for Maxwell Konedu in the last six, seven, eight, nine years because... Every appointment he's got has not ended quite well. And he struggled to impose himself upon teams, especially tactically. Even when his teams have won things, they've ground their way. The Wafu, the Wafu um, tournament comes to mind. Even when he was winning, you know, it came on the back of a lot of um, he's not playing well and so on and so forth. And people generally feel that whichever God Max Okonedu serves <laughs> is a very, very big God in it because... He keeps getting chance after chance after chance. And that's why he's trending number four or five on Twitter. What else is on Twitter, Oriku? Well, in terms of uh, Milovan Ryovac and why he's number one, uh, we can see some tweets. Uh, that's from the Joy Sports team saying that, you know, both of them are suited up. And Gary, Gary's right by me here. <laughs> says that, you know, that is Milovan and his interpreter. And this one is one by me saying that the lights of uh, is that a good or bad omen uh, for Milovan returning as Ghana coach? And then this one from Kelly Willy joint. He says that am I the only one who is excited about the appointment of Milovan Ryovac? Yep. TV3 Ghana also joining the conversation. Uh, there's one by Gary. Gary has been pretty active. <laughs> OTAJ also joined the conversation. This one by the Ghana Football Association says, I feel this country is my second home. And uh, quickly, Gary, on, you know, Ghana being a second home, shouldn't you know the language of your second home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, we want to run through a lot of things just to feed it with as much information as possible. So after looking after the timeline, can we now look at the first taint of Milovan Rahivad? Let's remind ourselves, 
one of the questions that somebody asked at the press conference was, why have you gone for Milovan Rahevat when he has not done much since he left? So let's remind ourselves of what he did with Ghana and after Ghana. His first stint with Ghana looked like this. Riku, you take that one for us, please. So yeah, if we could get that particular uh, graphic of Bilovan's uh, first term. Uh, he played 28 games, won just 12, and lost 12, drew 4, uh, 35 goals scored, conceded 33, a win rate of 42.9%, which, if you want to look at it in relative terms, is lower than CK Akono's 44%. But you really have to put the numbers in perspective to be able to understand why it looks like this. Now, Milovan was the type of coach who literally took friendlies as friendlies. He didn't, he didn't care about friendly matches. Most of his losses came actually as, uh, you know, you came through uh, fr friendly games. He was very good with competitive matches when it came to AFCON qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, and World Cup games. And so that's when he won most of his games. Now, interestingly, if you remember in 2010, one term that used to fly around a lot were these three words, one goal project. And that was Milovan for you. Six out of his 12 wins had Ghana winning by one goal to nil. And so whenever Ghana scores early, we defended pretty well. Right. So that was Milovan in his first term. Now, after leaving Ghana, what was he like, Oriku? Well, after leaving Ghana, he actually went roaming a bit where he worked with <laughs> five different teams. Uh, he worked with Qatar, he worked with Al Ahli, that's a Saudi Arabian team, and then Ruda Velenj, uh, Algeria, where he lasted for just a couple of games. Gary will be explaining why after this. And then he also recently worked in Thailand, where he was sacked in 2019. So technically, he's been unemployed for more than two years now. And uh, out of these five teams that I mentioned, he played a total of 36 games, winning 16, losing 8, drawing 12. Now, the goal ratio has gone really high. Milo seems to be scoring a lot of goals in these <laughs> games now. 72 and 36. And uh, if you see goals conceded, 49. Win rate went up uh, by just a tiny bit to 44.4%. Now, guys, let's come to the Algeria one. Right, so um, among the teams that he coached was Algeria, and uh, maybe, I mean, Milo has time. I interviewed right in the studio an Algerian journalist because he was in charge, that's Milo was in charge for only two games. And after the second game, the big players of Algeria went to the FA, the Federation of Algeria, and told them that they didn't like him because they didn't trust him. And uh, apparently, Milo used to call them by their numbers. Hey, number two, hey, number three, hey, number four. And so um, they, just, they just sacked him and they didn't trust him enough as well. So that's why they did that. So the jury is out there. Many of you have been giving your opinion on social media. Many of you have been letting us know, even on the street, what you think of the return of Milovan Rahibad. And so if the Vox Pop is ready, we will take what the people of Ghana are saying about the 67-year-old coming back to his Biggest accomplishment. Any power by your new Muya or Johnny Dian, the matter of fun, the Yazi Casa Bermano. Not a penifono, a moon mumbi. It's because Gana or Bajan or Mumbi, and Tina or Martha Cofano. But the sun, the air, Gana for the Ebe Pamono. What does happen for Najina Ebe Pamono? That could not step them whole Cochan and have a funny free park and so. Oh, I think like um, he's going to help us um, because he's done uh, L -M. he's done some one or two with us when he was here in like what's the name 2010 right yeah so I think he's going to help us this time around yeah. Milo no kakra meti makafana was a fat. Tama oba ene de oya di ene na ne performance ye good but oko no anfe mu e bua magana for ye ne e bua no che omo de habe ye omo CV ye. Omuye ni ye wi anu moje ye hoko. Kwa ya ufaso kwa ya no. We muye. Enti wano kwa di eni kwa se. Kwa no no mkoko fano. Na ya bi bifo ni yo problem. Ya ya huwa di ye bi ya ya mpe wano. Ya fi se bibi ni inti mi. E nyadi ya maya hono. Enti se jie fi fono susu saadi ya. Kwa mwa mpe ni fono su. Womu filo ni ya mfa mwa fo. Nwa me uru football ni ya uno se. Ebe kwa ye. So na milo. Ne tate se nene performance di ye good. Betu womu adi ye. 
enti kawasi yesu ya chile nesee umuye ya yeye buye hu tisi umasa hako hako fana asa adinaba obe yeye sebe bie mwa yaani ya penu wadia yeye yon kakra mekano no Ghana go to World Cup 2010, right? Yeah. So me as for me is good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah, I can say uh, I think last previous tournament he was good, but I think it's time for us to give the uh, team to a Ghanaian coach so that we can really make the team well. As for our coach, Kwesi Apia was good. Uh, CK Akono too was good. Right now, right now, what we need. It's a technical people which is we need in the team. So for my own opinion, I would say we should really sit down and check. As for Milovan, I don't support it. Imagine say kwa on befa so ma ball bono a tumpon be a monfasa kwa no so my uh coach new coach na blaster appoint in my ninja home because a brofu coach on ball munti me boagana. A munti mfa yin drew baby a uh black a bibinia bit me at the yako baby. And in tea, say, I dare say, see a dema brunier, see a dema bibinia, bibinini bet my pepe, bibinu so wide, really say brunier, but Mokofa bruni de bagana, I say, be oh here be a more demand about Mufa, bibini coach, dear Mompese, whatever mano, and Nutina Bribia, not be before they flop on us here, but who we are must be to me, I perform more well as any, a brofono, Kakram beating my canon. In fact, I am not in favor at all because. I don't see why they, they should appoint him as the head coach of the Blasters. Because I think with Milo, Ghania, we have a lot of Ghanaian coaches that can perform more than Miro. And the, 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 the salary, his salary is also too big. So I don't see why they should go for Milo. I think it, they can pick any of the local which is, I think he can do the work more than Milo. So I'm not in favor at all. So, Milovan, uh, hopefully he's watching. He's seen what the people are saying. Some in favor, some not in favor, like Keto Kraku said. Everybody will have a different opinion and not everyone will agree, but He's only asking for the support. Is he going to get it? We'll find out shortly. Very cool. Well, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's really important uh, that maybe Ghanaians would have to side uh, with, you know, Milovan Ryovac. Uh, but it's also worth to note that the same way Ghanaians are not too convinced about Milo's record in the last 10 years, uh, we, you, I think we're discussing that, that he was literally not that good when he was coming in 2009. And... He, you know, had just, what, 13 wins in his prior, 32 games prior to be appointed in 2009. So he was quoting, quote, an average manager, quote, you know, coach average teams. And that's the similar, he's actually coached more high profile teams now. Yeah. I mean, looking at the likes of Qatar, al Ahly in Saudi Arabia, and even Algeria and Thailand. So he was able to land these teams. So I think that he's evolved. He's probably come back a better man. And uh, hopefully uh, we do fill everyone with optimism and uh, he's able to do the job. Uh, but we do have some graphics to share with you uh, concerning Milo's uh, return. Now, it's a long time ago, 10 years, so uh, 10 or 11 years since he left his role as the Black Stars job. A whole generation of players have eased away into retirement. In total, he called 73 players during his first stint, and out of those 73, only nine remain in terms of still playing active football. We have Samuel Inkum, uh, who is currently playing his trade in Georgia. Uh, we have Andre Ayu, who's also playing for Al-Sad, recently joined them from Swansea City. John Boy, also in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Yeah, uh, recently signed in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and then we have a Samoajan, whose status is quite unclear. Uh, our sources from Legon City state that uh, he's not part of their preseason squad. And uh, we'll find out what his next journey is. But he's not announced that he's retired. Jordan, are you currently with Crystal Palace in the Premier League? Uh, we have Jonathan Mensah in MLS with Columbus Crew. Uh, Kevin Prince Barton, he's back in Germany. Germany making yeah. waves with Hertha. Hertha Berlin. Yeah, Kojo Samoa, he's also unattached. Uh, ever since he left Inter Milan, uh, he's yet to join a new club. Fatal Dauda, we would need clarity on that. Uh, he was Ligon City's keeper last season. We're told that he might be promoted to be 
um, you know, goalkeeper's coach this season, but it's not confirmed in news yet. So he's still an active footballer. So these nine survived from his stint. All right. So uh, based on that, we are trying to work the lines to get some more reaction to this one as well. But remember, we are also getting your views on Twitter. That's at Joy Sports GH. And we are also tweeting with the hashtag today, Milo returns, Milo returns. Uh, if we have a bit more on the slides, we have, we have several, several um, angles to look at as well. On Milo van Rahevat, yes. And uh, Milo van Rahevat is coaching a country with a storied football history, right? Let's go back to the year 2000, just to the year 2000. And um, Fredo Sam Dodu, the late, Jones Atu the late 2000 and 2001, respectively. Osam Dodu came back for 2001-2002. Zivadinovic took us uh, in 2002 as well. Mariano Barreto, uh, former Santu Kotoko coach, recently took us famously to the Olympic Games in 2004. He was in um, a year before then. Burkhard Ziz, 2003 as well. Zum so 2003 was a very interesting period. Uh, we had Ralph Zumdik also in that time. And then E.K. Afrani, 2002-2003. Um, Sam Ade, also late now. Afrani, late. Wow. Um, Sam Ade. Dukovic came and the World Cup renaissance uh, began for us in 2004-2006. Claude Leroy handled the Black Stars for the AFCON in 2008. Celastete, so after that, was a caretaker. That's why he is in yellow. You notice all the ones in black are the main coaches, and then those in yellow were caretaker. So last year, I was caretaker in 2008. And then we had Milova Rahevach, 2008 to 2010. Kwesi Apia uh, was a caretaker right after Milovan finished between 2010 to 2011 for one year. One, one game for one game. Yes. And then Goran Stefanovic, 2011-2012. Goran had a very good record with the Black Stars, but ha, he said, he's the guy who said Ghana played players like Juju too much. <laughs> and um, they, everybody descended on him, you know, Stefanovic. He had a very good record, though. Took us to the 2012 AFCON. Kwesi Apia, 2012 to 2014, took us to Brazil. The World Cup also qualified for an AFCON. Maxwell Kennedy was a caretaker after Kwesi Apia. Avram Grant came after the chaotic time of Kwesi Apia, you know, after the World Cup. He took us 2014 to 2017, took us to the World um, AFCON final. Maxwell Kennedy came back, and this is why people say Maxwell has so much luck. Uh, he came back as a caretaker. Kwesi Apia came for part two. Siki Akono finished. Recently, Milovan Rahevat is back. Now, let's go and get some more analysis. Somebody who played under some of these coaches, in fact, two weeks ago, he told us here that he would like a Serbian to be in charge because he believes they are disciplinarians, he believes that they don't take any nonsense, and he believes that they are tactically good. Roku, who do we have on the line? We have Prince Tego and uh, the Prince, Prince of Goals. Prince of Goals. Hi. Yeah, boss, boss. Hi, Prince. Hi, boss. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Everything cool. I'm sure you're happy now. You you didn't <laughs> you didn't predict that a Serbian will take the job, but you said you hoped a Serbian will have the job. Remind us why you said so for those who didn't listen at the time. Yeah, because uh, listening from I mean your point of view, you know, you can check the records and how good and I mean what he has achieved for Ghana when it comes to qualification of Afon and the World Cup. And me what I really like about him most is about the discipline and calm. You know, there's there's a man that I mean when you say yes, it is yes. When you say no, it is no. But right now it's up to the players to show they are ready to qualify Ghana to the World Cup because I mean, this guy can, this, I mean, I can't use the name guy, but this man can choose a whole lot of local players who are ready, I mean, to help Ghana qualify and add with the professional players. He doesn't mind. There are some names that we know that if they're not in the team, the team cannot go far. But this man can do certain things that I'm, I'm sure without them, Ghana will see and I'll have the results. I mean, that's what I know and that is what I've experienced at my time. So... I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that he's back and uh, I know he's going to do the work because we really need to go to Qatar. 
<laughs> we really do, uh, Prince. And you yourself, you scored five goals and provided one assist under uh, coach Milovan Bajevac. You stated earlier that you wanted Ghana to play a 4-4-2 formation. It's something that you enjoyed and you were the prince of goals. When you look at the national team right now and the players available to Milovan Bajevac now that he's been appointed, do you still stand by that thought that we should go with a 4-4-2? Yeah, I mean, um, when you check, I mean, with Milo, when I joined the team, I mean, uh, before the qualification, if people could remember, before the qualification to the World Cup, we were not playing one top. Maybe people have forgotten. We were playing two strikers. And that was the 4 4 2 information that, I mean, I, you got to understand that this is our best information that we were playing. And if you could remember, it's either me and Agogo on top or me and Matiamwa on top. And it is two strikers. That's why we were able to qualify. At that time, our brother Samajan was a little mm -hmm. bit injured, and so he was not part of the team. Until we qualify. And when we qualify, you know, it is the world that we are going to play with. So that one, we have to add so many tactics to the game to prevent people from scoring us, for us to go far. That is when we started playing one top. And that one top also helped because some of us were playing wings and were working hard not to score, but we're working out. I mean, make sure the strikers they get the good good pass and good. I mean, I mean they have to get a good pass to score. So that was what happened in the World Cup. But when when you when you really check the qualification, it was four four two. We're playing. We're not playing one top. Just before you go, uh, Milovan has been given two targets. An immediate one of winning the AFCON and uh, one middle term one of qualifying to the World Cup. Do you think those two are realistic for him? Yeah, I mean, um, the, time, the time is very limited. And uh, since, I mean, the EFI believes in him and they've given him this opportunity, I think they should allow him and give him the right place that we have. And they should allow him also to do his own research and add whoever he wants to add up. And let's see how it's going to be, because I think he, he's going to deliver. That is what I believe. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prince Tego, uh, who was a, he was a regular feature under Milovan Rajevac in his first spell. And he joined us uh, on phone uh, to talk about what it feels like or how it feels playing for the Serbian coach. And he stated that he thrives a lot on now. Uh, he plays a lot of emphasis on discipline and he also believes Ghana has to play a 4-4-2 formation and uh, we'll be wrapping up pretty shortly uh, but Gary let me just take some closing thoughts from your end what you've made of this whole unveiling process well the deed is done uh, whether you agree and I agree you know part of us is skeptical about second comings but our job is simple now to get the black stars to the Afghan and do very very well hopefully win it and that's what we all hope and then qualify for the world cup for me that's the big personally that's my biggest target as well and um, if we have one other slide or we're going to finish with that editorial yeah. just to say that the editorial you're going to see the editorial you're going to see right now is the position of the joy sports team on what we think the fa and um milovan rahibat should do going forward it's been a pleasure coming your way with what has been an amazing day for Ghana football, really. And props to the GFA. They said they would start at 2 p.m. And they started just before 2 p.m. Massive shout for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much, Gary L. Smith. Uh, my name is Ari Kuwampofo. And a big uh, shout out to the whole Joy Sports team, everyone contributing to bring uh, this show to you. Uh, the news just came out yesterday and we had to put all of this together. And thank you very much for making time at home to watch us. Keep an eye out on our social media handles. We'll be rolling our graphics and more information and analysis on Milo Van Riva's second return. My name is Ari Kuwampofo and it's bye for now.